Let's look at a slightly different example. Here we have a two by four game. Player one gets a choice of just these two rows, and player two gets a choice of column one, column two, column three, or column four. We can analyze this in much the same way we analyzed the last one by just asking the question, what is the expected payout if player one plays row one with probability p and row two with probability one minus p. So let's compute the expected return if player two chooses each of the different columns. If player two chooses column one, the return is two times p minus two times one minus p. And we can easily simplify that to be 4p minus 2. If player 2 chooses column 2, the return is given by 1 times p plus 3 times 1 minus p. And that's just equal to 3. And then we have minus 3p plus 1p is minus 2p. If player 2 chooses column 3, the return is given by 0 times p plus 1 times 1 minus p. Which is easily seen to be just 1 minus p. And finally for column 4, the expected return would be minus 1 times p plus 4 times 1 minus p. And that's just going to be 4 and we have minus 4p and another minus p, so we have minus 5p. Now if we just plot those here, similar to what we did before, p along this axis between 0 and 1, what do we get? Well, let's plot 4p minus 2. When p is 0, we start at minus 2 here. And when p is 1, we get all the way up to plus 2. So this just looks something like that. Then we plot 3 minus 2p, starting up here at 3 and ending when p equals 1 at 1. It just looks like that. And 1 minus p starts at 1 and goes down to 0, like that, and 4 minus 5p. And I should have put in the column numbers. This is for column 1, this is for column 2, this is for column Three And for column 4, we have 4 minus 5p. That starts up here at 4 and goes down to negative 1. That looks kind of like this. Now, what is player 1's objective? Player 1 has to choose a value of p that will get him the best return. And remember, player 1 wants the largest number for return. Well, if player 1 picks a value of p somewhere over here on the left, we'll see that player two might pick column one and the return would be very bad for player one. It would be a very small number. So for values of P that are small here, these this is the worst that could happen to player one. Player two could pick column one. But once we get to this point, the worst thing that could happen for player one, if player one picks a value of P in this small range, is for player two to pick column three. And then over here, we'll see and I didn't write this down here. This is column four. No, I did not do column four correctly. That's why I didn't write it down. Let me fix column four before we continue with this analysis. I apologize. What does column four look like? Four minus five P starts way up here at four and goes down to minus one. Now it's gonna look better, something like that. This is column four. So getting back here to the curve we were drawing, if P is a big number here, column four still is the worst thing for player one, if player two picks column four. And so we have this curve which represents the worst possibilities for different choices of P by player one. How does player one choose the best value of P? Well, you see, if we look at the highest point on this green curve, 
player one can actually guarantee that by picking the value of P right there, for which the point on that curve, on this lower curve, is the highest. And it looks like that happens at the intersection of column three and column one. We can compute that very easily. of line three and line one. To find that intersection we solve, we equate the return from column one with the return from column three. We solve four P minus two equals one minus P or five P equals three, P equals three fifths. When P equals three fifths, we can see that the Y coordinate here, which is the expected return there, It's just what you get when you plug three fifths into the four P minus two or the one minus P and you see easily that that's gonna be two fifths. So the height of this point here is two fifths when P is equal to three fifths. What about at this other intersection point? Because maybe we haven't drawn this perfectly. The other intersection point we see there is the intersection between line four and line three. And we then have to solve four minus five P is equal to one minus P. When we solve that, we get three is equal to This is 4p, p is equal to 3 fourths. So it's a little bit further to the right here. Let me uh, write this a little more clearly. Here's where p equals 3 fifths. And here for this intersection point, we have p equals 3 fourths. And when p equals 3 fourths, what's the y coordinate there? The value, the expected return, if player two picks column three, or column four, where we just plug in P equals three fourths to one of these, and we get the expected return of one minus three fourths, which is one fourth. You'll notice one fourth is less than two fifths, so this really is lower than the value you get when P equals three fifths. So the minimax strategy for player one is to choose P equal to three fifths. The value of the game is then two fifths. So you'll notice that when P equals three fifths, player two is there at the intersection where of column one and column three. So this game really behaves like just the two by two game, two zero minus two, one, that's using just columns one and column three. Those are the active columns here, where player one played three fifths, row one, and two fifths, row two. The value of the game using the formula we've seen before is was just two fifths, that's the determinant, which is two divided by two minus zero plus one minus negative two. So the value is two fifths. We can compute <coughs> player two's strategy to achieve this value of two fifths as well, regardless of what player one does by choosing the right probability for playing row one and row two. I'll leave that to you guys to compute. You can do that using the formulas we derived before or just set up the appropriate equations for that one. I wanna put out one thing before we stop talking about this game, which is that you'll notice here the line from player two's choice of column two is entirely above the line from column three. And this line from column two doesn't play any role at all in this green curve. That tells you something interesting about column two that you could figure out right away if we had actually looked for it. And that's that column two here is strictly dominated by column three. You'll notice here the line for column two is always above the line for column three. No matter what player one does, player two is better off playing column three than column two. So if we had wanted to, the first thing we might have done is say column two is dominated. That won't be played at all. We then wouldn't even have to consider the possibility of column two here. That would have not affected the other things we did in our solution. And we'd have 
attain the exact same results.